Hi, Alex here. Have you used a carton like this before? Do you know how they're made and how sustainable they are? A few weeks ago, I was invited to visit with Tetra Pak US executives to hear about their sustainability commitments and to share my thoughts with you. This video is sponsored, but as usual, you can count on me to give you a rigorous sustainability review of what Tetra Pak does, the sustainability challenges they're facing, and the lessons we can all learn from them. Let's have a quick look at how Tetra Pak cartons are made. It starts with a huge roll of paperboard, 100% of which comes from certified forests and or control sources. Nice! This goes into a giant printer that transfers the package design onto the paper. Then, a very thin layer of polyethylene, meaning plastic, is added on the outside. For the aseptic cartons, a sealing layer of polyethylene and another very thin layer of aluminum foil is added on the inside. To wrap it all up, another thin layer of polyethylene is added to protect its contents. The huge roll is then sliced into smaller rolls, so it can be processed with Tetra Pak's filling machines. With these machines, the cartons are sealed and shaped into a tube, and the tube is filled with a product like a sausage. Very much like Tetra Pak's founder did in 1955, but better, especially when it comes to materials used and efficiency. Finally, on some carton designs, a cap is glued on top that pierces the carton ceiling the first time it is unscrewed to be consumed. Why the polyethylene and why the aluminum? I asked, wondering if we could do without. The aluminum, especially, is very important because it protects the food from oxygen and light until it is open and makes it shelf stable for up to a year, meaning that the food or beverage is protected and does not go bad during that time. The polyethylene protects the carton on the inside and outside. This is what makes a Tetra Pak carton very good at protecting food, which gives it its main sustainable quality, in my opinion. It is great to avoid food loss and to make food products available in some parts of the world where cooling is not always available. It is also lightweight, especially compared to glass, so it contributes to fewer carbon emissions while transported. Here is another interesting thing I didn't know. Tetra Pak does not just make cartons. They also provide food processing equipment and solutions. Tetra Pak is making headway to reduce waste and conserve resources in these areas of their business as well. What are the main sustainability challenges for Tetra Pak? Certainly the biggest one is the recycling of cartons. Being recyclable is not enough, unfortunately. Tetra Pak depends on consumers to recycle their cartons and on local recycling facilities. Because there is a lot to talk about recycling, I will focus on it in a separate video coming up just after this one. As with other multinational manufacturing operations companies, Tetra Pak depends on consumers opting for its cartons instead of reusable containers. To create and distribute the packaging, Tetra Pak relies on large quantities of materials and energy. However, Tetra Pak is actively seeking and implementing solutions to be more sustainable across the value chain. From creating water-based inks to reduce air pollution, to exploring graphene as a carbon-reducing material alternative, they recognize where they can improve in their sustainability efforts. I have to say that it was quite inspiring to meet Tetra Pak's people and to see their dedication to address these challenges and create good products. They continually improve the sourcing of the materials and work to develop sustainable products. For example, in 2014, they launched a Tetra Rex carton that's made with bio-based polyethylene and uses a plant-based cap. The Dallas factory that I visited runs 100% on renewable energy, 6% of which is produced by their solar array on campus. Their goal is to run 100% on renewable energy worldwide by 2030. As a food processing provider, Tetra Pak is in the position of the middleman who can help reduce the ecological footprint of an entire value chain. They are taking more and more of a leadership role to help their customers make more sustainable products and make their industry more sustainable as a whole. Could Tetra Pak be more sustainable? Absolutely. They know it is a long journey and they have not arrived yet. They also know they won't be able to do it alone. Plastic straws are still an issue with some cartons, 
but Tetra Pak has come up with a paper straw alternative that still needs a bit more time to be manufactured and distributed instead of the plastic ones. I also think that not everything needs to be packaged in a Tetra Pak carton, and that a reusable container should be preferred for beverages such as water, where it can be easily accessed. As we will see in the next video, for Tetra Pak to be sustainable, they need their cartons to be 100% recycled. Back in my studio, I keep asking myself, how does nature do packaging? Maybe Tetra Pak could use biomimicry principles to invent a new type of packaging inspired from nature. There is an opportunity to think outside of the box. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this video. After subscribe, if you do, click on the little bell beside the subscription button to receive notifications when we post a new video. On our Patreon page, you can support us and get access to high resolution images of the original drawings used in our videos. And as usual, thank you for watching.